Welcome everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm Miriam Diora, and I lead the customer lifecycle marketing team here at Drift. My team is responsible for driving expansion and retention um, by uh, marketing to customers through the post-purchase journey stages. And that includes onboarding, expansion, retention, and advocacy. And we're also responsible for driving customer-led growth by building and nurturing advocates among our best customers. And whether we're talking about expansion or retention or nurturing our best customers and advocates, we have a mission to wow our customers in everything we do that includes delight and surprise touch points. So I have to say, George, I'm very excited to be here today to talk about ABM for existing customers. It's been a critical marketing strategy in the new acquisition world, as we all know. But as more and more businesses are shifting their goals and um, objectives to primarily retain customers and limit churn, I am sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. It is becoming a key marketing strategy to explore if you want to crush these goals and objectives of expanding and retaining your top customers. So thank you for having me today here. I'll do a quick intro myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Stacey. Um, as George alluded to earlier, I am the conversion marketing manager here at Drift. And other than owning Drift for Drift, for us, because we are a strictly no forms um, marketing organization, that also means that all conversion points, whether it's from paid search, organic, directly on the website, it all goes through Drift. So I own essentially the strategy on how we can best convert unknown to known. And we're so excited to be here today talking to you about ABM. So for those of you that are live with us today and also anyone that's catching up on the recording, um, here's what we'll be running through today. So first and foremost, of course, what do we mean by account-based marketing for our customers? And then we'll share a few examples on plays that we've done for one-to-one, one-to-few, as well as one-to-many ABM strategies. So what is account-based marketing? Account-based marketing is a form of marketing that uses um, highly targeted, personalized uh, touch points and to win over particular accounts. So it's, you know, you probably know it's been a common practice um, in your business acquisition strategies, but it shouldn't be undervalued in the post-sale experience either. And here's why. As I said earlier, ABM is a great way to drive expansion and retention among targeted accounts of your customer base and prioritize top accounts that fall under your ICP, ideal customer profile, and that are already seen success with your product or service, for instance. Customer ABM achieves two goals at once, drive pipeline and revenue for your top accounts, but also improve sentiments and perceptions thanks to a combination of personalized high touch and programs. And guess what? Because they are your customers, of they, there's much more data available to you and relevant to your customers that you can leverage while building those ABM programs. So we listed here some examples of data available to create personalized experiences. Um, Stacey will dive more into those, but the stage in the customer journey, based on where your customer is at, whether it's onboarding, adoption, expansion, or even renewal stage, you can tailor programs to target the key contacts within that account. Um, seniority of the user, I, I would even say seniority of the contact to be more specific. Um, in one-to-one -one ABM program, you may want to target your most strategic account, uh, but if you're talking to a user, you want to make sure that uh, they onboard successfully and adopt the product quickly. If you're talking to a product champion, you want to make sure that they are able to maximize the value. And if you're talking to a decision maker or an executive, uh, an influencer, you want to make sure that you're strategically engaging that audience uh, so they can recognize the value of your service or product and become loyal um, customers. Um, the maturity with the product, um, you know, you can customize your program, whether you are getting started with your service or ready to expand to a new location. And I think that's the beauty of, of ABM is whether um, your existing customer is willing to expand to uh, a new location or even have um, an expansion of organization. And a typical example here at Drift is we usually tap into the marketing organization. Uh, they start with Drift and then we want to expand to a sales organization or to a customer service uh, organization. And then the company size, it's very important. Um, it can it can impact the type of programs you will deliver. Uh, ABM programs that involve paid ads, for instance, usually need a minimum audience. So you want to make sure to take into consideration the company size for the audience size, obviously. 
Um, and then CLV, customer lifetime value, very important too for your ROI and making sure you are spending your marketing budget on the most profit profitable opportunities. But obviously there's much more data that you can leverage working with your business intelligence team, your marketing operations teams, and also getting intel from sales and, uh, and the customer teams within your organization. Stacey, you wanna talk more about some uh, personalized experience we've been doing at Drift? Yes, I can jump in there. So actually I wanna pick right back up where Maria mentioned about partnering very closely with our marketing operations team. Um, so to paint uh, a, a picture, we are a Marketo and Salesforce shop here at Drift. So whenever we're um, working closely with Miriam and her team regarding any type of ABM strategy, we're always really closely examining the fields of information that we're going to be choosing as our sources of truth. So for example, when we're looking at job title, seniority, even like personas to make sure that if there's any messaging we should be tailoring for sales leaders versus um, sales leaders or marketing leaders, that we have the most accurate and up-to-date information just because, you know, people, they do switch organizations, they progress in their careers. We just want to make sure that we aren't um, misidentifying them in any type of way. And one plus side, especially for, with our customers, is that um, since we are a marketing technology platform ourselves, we can get really granular on how mature a customer base is um, with how they are using our own platform for use cases. So we can really dial into like what tech stacks are they um, integrating our platform with? Um, what are like some sophistication with our platform that they're currently focused on, such as like, are they doing ABM themselves or are they uh, more in like the earlier stages with us? It really helps us to like inform what kind of messaging and gifts that we can be using to surprise and delight them in the future. ABM alignment. So before we even dive into the different type of ABM, I think it's very important to speak about the alignment of the teams when we think ABM uh, in a traditional marketing way. Um, we have marketing who's come up with their own go-to-market strategy and identify leads and then push those leads to the sales team. And then the sales team are responsible for closing the deals. And then you also have the, the customer team who's responsible to renew those deals, right? In the ABM world, we want to shift that relationship uh, mindset and really work um, as a one team between marketing, sales, and customer, and really leverage sales and the customer team to get intel so that marketing can really personalize content messaging that will be going to those targeted accounts. Stacy, do you want to talk to um, how at Trift we differentiate our new business and customer use cases, who we align to as teams? Yes. So this really comes into play, especially when it comes to any type of intel, because of course on new business side, this, despite all the kind of third party data that you have out there, we are at the same time still using our best guess whenever it comes to like different attributes about um, this company that we're trying to sell to versus, versus for actual customers. Of course, you have more of that relationship already built. There's actual humans on the other end that they're already working with. So there's just, they're just like, is overall much more deeper and more accurate intel that you can grab. So that way you can identify what's the low hanging fruit for expansion opportunities fall. So like really be close to identifying lockstep. Um, what's the strategy on making sure that like companies that might need a little bit of extra help, maybe fully adopting the platform that you sell, um, they're actually getting that help. All right. The fun part now, real life um, example of EBM programs. Um, there are three types of ABM programs. Stacey and I will touch base on each type and walk you through examples of how we've been approaching the ABM programs at Drift and what type of personalization we've, we've implement, implemented. But keep in mind that for each type of ABM, you want to leverage appropriate marketing, sales, CSM channel mix, and allocate the right budget. One of the goals of my team at Drift is to surprise and delight our customers. ABM on the customer side isn't just about expansion opportunity, but it's about improving the sentiment of customers with your brand. And that's where one-to-one -one ABM plays come in. This is where you want to target your most strategic account. You want to make sure that you work in close partnership with the customer success and account management team and the account, the customer account to deliver high personalized content 
and messaging directly to individual target accounts. So it's like you're treating each account as one market. And that leads to better strategic engage engagement, value recognition, improved relationship, and company loyalty. Usually in one-to-one -one ABM, you may want to limit to five, from five to 15 account. It is a very time consuming program from a resources perspective, from a research perspective, and it's one of the most expensive um, ABM program. So at Drift, we launch an ABM campaign targeting the sales persona. Uh, sales organization are an opportunity for us to expand within an account, but it can be more difficult to engage with that sales persona than the marketing persona. So to, uh, to help strategically engage directors and VPs with our account managers, we launched a sales efficiency play. And the theme was related to the Top Gun movies um, it consisted of an email component sent to the targeted audience coming from the account management with the option to customize a video using Drift Video. And by the way, Drift Video is a great way to reach higher into accounts. Our account managers and customer team members love to use this play to introduce themselves to C-suite executives who may not have the time to hop on a call. So when they open the email, um, they would be invited to click on a link to go to a landing page with content dedicated to their own use case, addressing their specific uh, business needs and challenge. And they will go through a personalized bot experience, um, name, uh, personalization, name of the account manager to book a meeting with their account manager. They would also be gifted a nice Ray-Ban aviator um, glasses as they expect to meet, as they, as they accept to meet and talk with their account manager. So as they receive the nice package with a note um, and a thank you um, from, Diff, from Drift for considering Drift as their wingman, reference to Top Gun, as part of a promotional targeted offering. So we not only try to create a personal experience via the email, we really, again, try to customize our content through the landing page, create a personalized experience through the bot, and then end with a physical gift that uh, makes that um, moment memorable for them. Um, and I'll let Stacy speak to more uh, uh, in more details of the experience that we were able to create for that play. Of course, thanks, Miriam. So to kind of take a step back, um, this is like really one of those cases where like to an average person, anytime you launch, say like a new landing page for a new product or a feature that you're launching, they might see a very general experience, but because Marion's team is sending out these emails to these specific directors um, via Marketo, I'm able to take all, all these contacts that they've sent this email to and create a smart list out of it. So that way we can plug it into our own playbook targeting for this landing page. So we know if anybody that's a director level came from this email and now they're clicking on the link and they're now on the landing page, we can add in that like extra level of cookie identification for personalization. So that way we can call out their name, call out the company, let them know the fact that they already have access to this new feature. And that if they were interested in like talking to their account manager about how to use it, um, what are some best practices around um, just getting like team buy-in so that way they're really maximizing their use and their dollars with you, um, that they can actually see like a, a quick little walkthrough from the AM, but then also book a meeting to talk further about it. So that way they can actually take advantage of what they're seeing. So it just creates that like really seamless effect of like educating your customer, but then also like giving them what they actually need to be successful and then being able to, able to action on it. And then there's also, of course, the surprise and delight factor on the fact that like for thanking them for their time and like actually like, you know, taking the time to click on the email and like book that meeting, that this is where like the gift component is even nicer because like only a very select few of people actually get that extra gift. Not everyone gets it if they were just learning about this new feature. One to few. So one to few ABM programs are also highly personalized uh, programs, but here we're focusing on, on personalizing engagement for a small group of relevant targeted accounts. So this time we're trying to scale up to target a larger number of accounts that share similarities in profiles or, or, business, or business needs. Um, at Drift, we were trying to solve for the challenge that our account managers had when it came to engaging the sales persona and trying to showcase the value of Drift for their sales organization. So we launched a, an event, Conversation Corner, 
uh, we, by launching that event, we were able to create a venue for Drift sales team to interact with a buyer persona in a fun environment. Uh, we were able to bring educational and strategic conversations to sales decision makers and influencers in a more intimate roundtable like format and a smaller audience to engage them better. So the event was broken down into three parts and allowed for social networking hosted by a third party vendor for the first 10 minutes, followed by a strategic conversation hosted by uh, some drift uh, executives and ended with tactics where the leaders could see a customized demo of our product for their use case. So we partnered with the account managers to send an email invitation to the target audience. It included, it included a video clip um, of the two Drift speakers to get the overview of the content, get the audience um, motivated, to give them an idea of what we'll be talking about and have them think already about that event. And upon registration via a bot, they would receive a nice, a nice gift prior to the event. Um, it was a nice way of creating a memorable and informative event for sales leaders to understand the value of Drift. Um, they learn how Drift can be a, a, a fit as a partner and a network with other Drift customers that are trying to solve for the same challenge. So that animated event, we were able to basically really specifically target leaders with um, common challenges that they are trying to solve for, invite customers that have been able to um, overcome that challenge and really address um, them with a the content that really speak to them. And I think that's the beauty of account-based marketing. We are able to, to help our, our sales team get the attention and gauge strategically um, contact that they would not have been able to do so with uh, regular sales outreach or marketing outreach. So for um, what Miriam mentioned, as far as the use case of using video to just make sure you're, um, it's not just one-to-one, -one, but like one to your potential, like um, your entire buying team, there is a like mechanisms that we can um, conditionalize in, in the background um, through Drift, where we can make sure that the uh, correct customer that's seeing this video that we're actually like make routing the right AMs video to. So that way they have that like, face to name recognition, especially when it comes to executives, then like maybe they don't have enough time to come to like strategic calls or like having bi-weekly or monthly. It's like a really nice way to make sure like they are still properly introduced to who the, who their um, partner here at Drift is. And also as like, just a general way, as we are more um, working more digitally and in a virtual working environment, um, having your like your managers or your executives send a video to be like a group of your customers is also like a really nice and like practically like low lift personalized way of making sure that this executive feels that leader to leader relationship building um that is much easier to do now than it was back in the day when people were still meeting on site for some of these introductions so it really helps um bridge the gap that we have now um, when it comes to you know moving into a more digital focused working environment and this has been one of our top campaigns. All right, moving to one to many um, ABM programs here, we're, we're targeting a larger number of accounts at once. Um, and we rely heavily on technology and automation. So when you have um, accounts in a one to many uh, type of ABM, there is a low personalization. Um, example of what we've done, um, as we said, as I said at the beginning, one of the main goals of my team is to surprise and delight customers. And you know, email campaign can be a great way to do that. We've been doing a couple of campaigns that would fit into one too many. We we like to send emails around the end of the year as a note of gratitude, and we select uh, our top customers and give them um, with a physical gift. Um, as well as we also have a campaign that. Um, celebrate customers achieving an anniversary with a brand. So it will be uh, a personalized email, but then they would all have access to the same kind of gift. We're, we're not going to that level of personalization as if you were to in a one to one or one to few type, they would still have a gift, but uh, less personalization here. Um, customer webinars can also be a great way to create a personalized onboarding experience at scale. Um, we also have welcome kits that we send to our new customers where 
again, not much personaliz personalization, but we're still targeting those key accounts and gifting them with um, some um, kits to improve that uh, experience from the very beginning stage, which is onboarding. Um, Stacey, I don't know if you want to talk to some more specific uh, personalization we did in some of our one-to-many programs. Of course. So in anniversary type of plays, um, we usually do um, lean on he pretty heavily on conversational landing pages as a way for um, just like a as a as a platform for for us to send these um, customers to, so that way they can select the type of gift that they want. Um, but what they don't see work in the background is like we have also identified them by like what type of anniversary are we celebrating, and also what's their tenure at the company. So just depending on their seniority or um, by, by how long they've had there, we just want to make sure that the gift is also an accurate reflect reflection of our gratitude um, for their ongoing partnership with us. So whether it's someone on, on a man Android level that maybe like you know helps manage the team that happens to like work within the drift platform on their side or maybe it's it's an executive buyer on their side that we know is a very close strategic partner on just making sure that um our platform is like widely adopted throughout the company so there's different like levers depending on that so these are all things that are happening in the background but for our customers what they typically do see is they'll see the message to um, kind of choose your options of gifts. And then we usually do include like a photo of the sneak peek. So that way they can really get excited for um, that gift arriving in their mailbox. And I would add ABM for customer um, is still something pretty new um, in the industry. Companies are testing, we're testing, but we have seen some um, successes and difference from our traditional marketing when we, we start doing more personalization and customization. So that's definitely something um, to try to leverage and do more. It does require much more coordination with cross-functional teams, um, which as I explained before in traditional marketing, sometimes we work more in, in silos uh, in the different function. This really um, help kind of have an alignment around uh, the data we use and how we partner with cells, um, which has been a, had, has had a positive experience in our uh, partnership with those teams. Connie asks, if we're just starting out on ABM, what should we focus on in terms of personalization content? It may take some time to customizing all of our creatives. So what area should we prioritize for a successful campaign? Before even um, going into the content, I would say it's prioritizing the accounts you are um, basically trying to, to push. Um, and that will influence the type of content, the types of marketing channel you, you want to use. Um, again, it, it can become very costly, costly. So things that you can really try uh, without impacting too much of the budget is um, email customization or, um, you know, when you're having a, a, an email signature, you can easily... Uh, adjust a banner with your creative team and create a, de a dedicated CTA for an account, um, updating some of your creative with uh, that company logo, or, you know, mentioning more of their company name in some of the uh, creative that you you have is, is making those kind of tweaks that can already make a difference and get their attention. Uh, but I would say most of the, the content that will drive those changes is based on what type of account you will go for. Nice. Uh, Angie heard the conversation around gifts and asked, uh, what gift do you give via a bot gift card question mark? I know you mentioned one example, but are there some other examples of how you use gifting uh, and chat together? Yes. So gift card is, uh, we learn to always include an option as gift card because sometimes, you know, as much as we try to personalize our content, we don't know everything about the, the in, you know, the interest and, and taste of our audience. So we usually try to give uh, three options. Gift card is one of them, but we try to really be surprised to surprise them and, and give things. The, the example would be our end of year campaign. We, we gifted some customers with a so let's go. And some as and more is something to enjoy during winter, which uh, it's hard to say, I don't like that. I think we had very good feedback. But then again, the gift card is always a great option. So when we, again, you don't have so much intel and you want to make sure 
um, your audience will be able to to benefit from what you're trying to to give them. Caleb asks, will you expand a bit about what you mean by no forms? Yes. So um, what I meant by when I mentioned that Drift is a pretty strictly no form organization is that if you go anywhere around our website, you won't see the typical multi-field um, info input of a form option. Instead, any button that you click on our website, um, any conversion point for like an ebook or a webinar, you will see that it's tied to a very specific playbook experience where a customized bot will pop up to kind of have that relevant conversation with you. So whether it's a demo request, whether it's getting in touch with our sales team, or even like signing up for webinars such as this, um, the bot will actually guide you through a custom conversation that is best suited for the outcome that you're looking for. Um, it's incredibly helpful for us because it takes something where it might take like two to three touches or conversions, um, typically from like multiple pages or multiple like drip emails, and then say condenses it into one conversation. The amount of trust that is made between you and a prospect um, when you're able to help them guide to their next step is immense. So having this in our back pocket is definitely like a, a, a secret tool in a way. I love that. Jim asks, what metrics do you collect and analyze to gauge success or need for improvement? For us, because we do measure everything from a conversation standpoint, since we do use our own chatbot to um, drive these conversions, engagement rate and overall email capture rate is definitely one of those um, constant statistics that we do monitor. But then also um, to what Miriam alluded to before, we're also super open from our customers on their feedback on the types of gifts that we offer. So if we offer in some like, for example, like branded swag, maybe they've had enough drift branded water bottles and they want something else. It's always something we're open to hearing because at the end of the day, it's they're the ones that, that need to be surprised and delighted. Um, but I think other than that, if there ever is like an EBM campaign where we are trying to drive traffic to an offer via like email, of course, the typical email stats are also pulled in for analysis as well. Nice. Um, Sam asks, what are some of your wish list items for your customer ABM program? Very good question. Um, again, because ABM is different from traditional marketing, it's making sure that there is alignment on those accounts that we're targeting. And then from a marketing perspective, I think it's making sure that it might be, it might sound simple, but securing budget. Um, it does requires a budget to, to do ABM, especially when we tap into one-to-one -one or one-to-few. Um, so budget is, is very important. And then um, resources, uh, it requires, time and resources to do customization. So I think that's something also as a priority among a marketing team or um, a business to make sure that we, we will be able to execute on what we want to do. Um, that would what come top of my mind. Beautiful. Uh, Aaron asks, how are you creating the customization and personalization experience on the landing pages specific to the contacts from your ABM emails? I can take that. Um, so there's really like two levels of it. Um, there's what's actually on the landing page itself. So statically, um, are there certain headers that we can be customizing to call out maybe their company name, their industry, maybe the person's name themselves. And then there's the level of personalization that we can do within the chatbot itself. So are there any like known attributes we can be pulling in? Are there... Um, is there, are they tied to your Marketo cookie for a list of like directors that are celebrating their like three year anniversary, anything like that? So we can customize the messaging to maybe like call that out. Um, it just really depends on like what levels of information you have that you're able to input into, whether it's your landing page or your chatbot experience itself. Very nice. Connie asks, and I like this because you, some companies, some um, verticals have to be careful. Connie asks, is there a surprise or delight uh, that isn't a gift? I'm in healthcare and we need to be careful about gifting. 
Yes. Yeah, so our surprise and delight campaigns are not always tied to um, physical gift. So for instance, um, what we, an example of, we run a campaign last year around customer appreciation day. Um, and what we did is we actually leveraged, we put together a landing page, put a lot of content that we knew our customer would be interested in as showcasing the success of other customers and showing how leveraging Drift with specific features will show that return on investment or that amount of leads or meeting books. So it's not always physical. It's also surprising and delighting with content um, that is relevant for the audience. Nice. I love that. So uh, I think it's Alana. I apologize if I said that wrong, but Alana uh, was conversation corner just provided during the event or available later on. So just to make sure I understand the question, is she talking about the gifting of Conversation Corner? Conversation Corner was the event itself. Um, we it, it's a, It was a temporary campaign and basically it was a starting point to engage uh, strategic contact and um, have them start a conversation to then follow up with their the account manager on the account. So I'm not sure I answered her question. I'm not sure I understood her question, but this was a temporary uh, campaign that we played. And Alana, if you're still with us, let us know in the chat pane if we answer it or give us more uh, specificity and we'll dig back in. Uh, Jim asks, can you give a sense of account managers and service managers level of involvement, alignment, participation? Like how should it be thinking about the teams and who are doing the things that need to be done? Very, very good question. And, and we've, We've gone through this at Drift. I think it's it's um, relying a lot on our data team and basically marketing will take a first stab as, okay, we came up with that list of account working with our, our operation teams. We use our own criteria. It could be based on the top revenue, top AR or based on the lifetime value. And then we will work on those accounts that we selected with the account manager, the owner of the account, and make sure that we can identify the key contacts that we wanna go after. So that's where the collaboration is, is we, we come with a list. We don't just go and market to them. We wanna have some sort of approval um, that we have the right account, but then not just the account the, at the contact level. We wanna make sure that um, we know as much as we can, if they know the birthday of that person or what that person likes to do during the summer, we can customize better, better gifts if we know that they have families with kids. We can, again, incorporate that in our marketing and be more sensitive to, to their own, um, for their own experience. Nice. Uh, Sarah, I love this question because it's like almost can you over delight or not or how much should you delight, right, uh, customers? Sarah asks, how often should we reach out to these accounts and delight them? Uh, and maybe if there's a few examples of if there's like a rhyme or reason or it's a one-time thing, uh, what are your thoughts? I think delighting and surprising customers, th there's just two areas. You can do it based, it could be an event driven, something happened with the business. We want to acknowledge that uh, and take that opportunity to showcase uh, drift value. An example is um, they reach one year with us. We would send them a, a nice gift, but also recapping the success that they've had with our product. So we are tidying some value to that gifting. And then there are other delight and surprise programs that are independent on any event on a business and just like celebrating an end of year. So I think it's just combination of both. And that's why uh, mapping those experiences through the journey at a contact level is very important. You don't want to do too much. Um, you don't want to not do enough, but I think it's just having that, um, that trigger in, in, in engaging those contacts. Nice. Uh, Ashray, I, I know I probably jacked that one up, but the question is golden. So I want to get it in here. When starting ABM in a large organization, do we focus on specific countries and the accounts there, or do we just start globally? What works better globally focusing on customer base or country wise? Good question. I would say it really depends on your company goals um, and what you're trying to achieve. But as you get started, you always want to 
kind of run a pilot and do something that you can scale before going big. Because again, it's about testing and optimizing and improving. So um, if it was me, I would start with, uh, you know, maybe the country I'm in and, you know, accounts that are very um, worth it. But again, that's where it's key to not think that marketing has the sole responsibility to make those decisions. And the customer team and the sales team are part of that because they will also guide on what makes sense and how uh, provide intel on those accounts. This is very nice. Penny asks, uh, what is the difference strategies targeting business customers and general consumers? Something about Drift is we, we tend to approach our marketing from a B2C perspective. And that's really what is important to us is how do we market at a contact level? And it becomes almost B2C. But in, in B2B, you kind of have to be careful and mindful of the fact that most of the account you contact you target for ABM or enterprise account, and usually uh, when it comes to gifting, for instance, they might not uh, be allowed to, to to get all those gifts, and that's why a mix of physical and um, um, non physical gift is very important. Um, and then I'm lost with the question. Yeah, Stacy, any additional thoughts on that one? Yeah, I would say like echoing everything Miriam just mentioned, but then also like, you know, there's a, there, there is an art and a science to um, like, even though at the end of the day, you are selling to a buying team that the decision of buying a platform like Drift, for example, is not something that one person can just sign up the entire organization for. There is a component where like, you can't get too lost and like just viewing this business you're trying to sell to as just a business, but as individuals that you have to win over to your entire lifetime with them. So like, what do these individuals actually care about? What are their like own KPIs and goals? And how do you also tie that in so that way you can like collectively be a partner to the organization, but then also to this individual? Love it. We'll squeeze one more in uh, before we close this bad boy out. Becky asks, what are the ways in which you gauge which accounts are the most or least engaged? So without giving too much detail to our own use case, I think there are different scenarios on, on why we choose to approach account for, to target account for ABM. One use case would be we are, um, successful with this account, but we have a strong competition. We just need to make sure that we we stay on top of that account and remind them on a regular basis of uh, the, the value of Drift. And to Stacy's point, it's, it's a buying committee. So we need to not only make sure our user is happy, the, the we have those champions within the account that are able to talk to influencers, but also interacting and engaging the, at that strategic level is important. And then you have other cases where we're going to use, we want to leverage ABM because yes, we have great success with an account, but as we try to expand, we have some distractors within this company and how do we turn their, how do we shift their mind? How do we engage them with our brand much more so that they can change their opinion and move from distractors to promoters and, and open doors for renewal and uh, expansion opportunities for us. Nice. Very nice. Well, thank you, Stacey and Miriam, for an amazing presentation and all of those questions that you answered. Thanks again, Drift, for sponsoring today's presentation. And as a quick FYI, attendees, when you exit Zoom, there will be a window that pops up with a very short 30-second survey. We'd love to hear what your thoughts on today's session was. Thank you again for joining us today, and we'll see you again real soon at the next Marketing Profs event. Great job, ladies.